Well, it's yet another completely rubbish day. It's done nothing but throw it down all morning. And we've got four to one mile an hour winds on top of that. And a leak in greenhouse. But on we go. One thing I have done this morning is I've took all rest at tomatoes off these Italian plums. Them plants are now done. The sweet millions are done. So all we've got in this greenhouse at the moment is what's on that bench behind me. The other greenhouse we recently stripped down. We haven't made us mind up exactly what we're doing with that yet. Except I did notice when I came out this morning that that greenhouse that we'd lent up against that shed has all been blown over by wind. So there's just a big pile with greenhouse bits halfway down the garden. And that's exactly how it's going to stay until this rain and this wind passes. Probably should have thought on and lent them a little bit more when I put them there. But well, I'm more concerned about what we're doing in greenhouse now. There's pepper plants doing really well. This is that one we're overwintering and since you last seen it it's got loads and loads of flowers on it. They're all over the place and we've got all that new growth coming through as well. That one is doing really well and I've said it before it's a really nice compact little plant to take in. But I'm not sure I want it to be growing about 12 peppers on it at the moment because if they all get pollinated that's how many there'll be. So I might have to pick some of these off. We're not going to get peppers at this time of year, it's too late. So some of these buds, I'm just going to take away, just discourage it from trying to grow more peppers. We haven't been able to get ripe peppers all year, never mind coming up towards end of September. I'll just keep taking them off. You're better off doing that when you're overwintering your plants anyway. Because if they keep trying to grow, they're taking energy from plants. They're not concentrating on growing a stronger root system. And we're trying to just keep these going over winter. We're not trying to grow fruit. So what I'll probably do with that is take all flowers off it. And see what happens after that. It's a bit late to try now. And the exact same one with this again. We've got flowers growing on it. We've also got that little pepper growing on it. If you can see that there. Still trying to grow a pepper. And I don't think that is going to amount to anything at this time of year. And as much as I don't really want to do it, I'm just going to take that pepper off. It's got no chance of growing to any decent size. But maybe it'll rot down out there, drop some seeds and we'll get three peppers next year. So that's all I can do, but we have still got plenty of new growth on bottom there. And again, more of these little buds trying to grow flowers. Helicopter. So basically today, all these canes will be coming up, we'll rip all these plants out and we'll get everything tidied up. And then there's probably going to be room to maybe bring a couple of benches in here, either side, to put more plants on. So maybe I'll take those two that's in container garden, since they haven't got a lot of them at the moment. And they'll have a lot less on them as well, if this wind carries on. Because one of them's already been blown over as well. So it's just looking at the way things lie at the moment. We've got all those little plants over here. We've got those Savoy cabbages that look like they're being attacked. And it's a strange one actually because they're just little holes that's being made in these leaves. Not chunks bit out at the side. So that could be flea beetle that's doing that. And somebody mentioned having problems with flea beetle on channel recently. And it can be a bit of a pain because you can use neem oil to get rid of them. But sometimes that doesn't always work. And the only other thing I can think of is if you plant things like catnip near to the ones that are susceptible to flea beetle because catnip will deter them but I think these ones since they're getting damaged in this greenhouse never mind outside there in all that damp with slugs and snails 
I think I'm going to put a couple of these in a container and grow them in here. See how they get on. I think this would be a really good sized container to put a Savoy cabbage in. It's got some good depth to it. And we've got some compost in it that we're reusing as well. So if we add a little bit of feed to that and pop maybe one of these plants in, it's got plenty of room to spread its roots. And maybe we can get an half decent sized Savoy cabbage out on it. That's my plan, what I'm making for this greenhouse at the moment. And I'm gonna try and do the same with cauliflowers once they've germinated and got to a decent size. But I think for today, maybe, I'm just gonna put one of these in and I'm just try and pick the best looking one. Or the biggest one. They are all pretty much the same, if I'm honest. If I just take one out. You can see they're not bad looking plants those, they're a good size. We've got plenty of roots growing on and we've also got roots around that bottom as well. So as always we loosen those up. Then I'm just going to make that hole right in the centre. I was thinking about maybe putting a couple in but I don't want the plant to struggle. I'd rather get one decent one than two very tiny ones. So I'm going to do what I always do, and that is plant this deep. And obviously the idea behind that, if you follow the channel through here, is that we can bury any length of stem that we've got, if it's got a bit leggy, or if it started to grow to one side, which they do sometimes. So we take that out straight away, and that quick we've got this little Savoy cabbage planted in a very good sized container and this has been outside so it's obviously quite wet so there's no need to do any watering I'm going to pop a little bit of fish blood and bone around the top as we water it the nutrients will go down to the roots anyway and then we'll also give it some liquid seaweed to start that on its way but for now that's all we can do with that So that's another one foot bench. I am going to take a couple more of these out and do exactly the same thing, but I'm not going to do it right at this moment and bore you to death. We've also put a video on cooking channel today as well, and we've been making blackberry vodka. If you make it now, it'll have aged enough to have a really nice fruity vodka taste to it by Christmas. And I know Bessie says don't mention the C word, meaning Christmas. But it's a bit too late for that and we know it's on people's mind people are starting to move a little bit away from the gardening and of course there's no wonder with this weather and now people are thinking more about the Christmas time whereas I'm not I'm thinking more of what I can drink at that time of year and what I can still keep growing so anyway if you're interested in seeing that blackberry vodka recipe that we've put on there's a link in so you can pop over there, take a look, and why not hit subscribe while you're over there? Because we're always putting new recipes on every single week. So I'm not going to plant them at the moment. I'll do those later. I'll concentrate on these tomatoes. We'll get those up, get the canes put away for this year. And then we'll have a bit of a measure up and see if those benches will fit in here. But we're slowly starting to get a collection of plants. We've planted quite a few seeds. We've done kale, we've done cauliflower, we've done some more basil, not sure how that's going to work out. But every day that goes by, or every other day, we're adding to this collection. And we'll just keep doing that and try and grow as much as we possibly can. All we through autumn and into next year. So if you're interested in seeing what we might be doing over the next few days, please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell, and I'll see you then. Take care. Thank you.